today on the next generation critic Jordy creates an artificial intelligence that takes over the ship yes! the first point is lost for Diana Moldauer not being a regular on the show even though she's regular on the show data goes out of turbo lift walks down a curved hallway from the saucer section to engineering minus one point for a single set of turbo lift doors minus one point for the wrong hallway, and minus one point since engineering doesn't have its own turbo lift. The next point is lost for the victory being in engineering and not Geordie's quarters. Minus one point for the nautical flag spelling gibberish. They could at least have it just say HMS victory. Data is fascinated that the ship is not replicated, which we are getting close to now with 3D printer technology. This reference to simpler times is foreshadowing of what's to come up. The days of simpler technology are going to get thrown right out the window with artificial intelligence. Hopefully creating things by hand will not become a lost art. Chief Clancy says eye number one. Data may be an android, but he does have an imagination and a creative streak. And sometime in the future, the computer will change the phrase, you may enter, to enter when ready. Minus one point for opening credits six minutes into the show. Minus one point for the holodeck having such lifelike graphics. Shout out to Brent Spiner for saying this correctly, but I won't show the video due to copyright claims. Aww. Data takes the book off the shelf, then puts it back backwards. Minus one point. Jordy looks great in a suit, but it's obvious he's not really writing, so minus one point. Data believes the inspector is the first baseman. Isn't the lamp behind Jordy electric? Data likes to solve mysteries really quick, doesn't he? Lestrade says it's Michael Scott. Jordy says freeze program, but the fire is still burning, so minus one more point. It is like, no, wait, come back, we're not done yet. Look closely, this extra gets to wear civilian clothes. Why don't the main characters ever have off-duty outfits? They have three days off waiting for the victory, so minus one point. This is bad English. Anyone is singular, there is plural. Dr. Pulaski got a bad rap for thinking of data as a machine, but there is a possible reason for this. Gene Roddenberry's vision was the crew would always get along and there would be no conflict, which the writers didn't like, and after he parted, all the characters on the following series fought with each other. Is it possible that after the departure of two leading females with accusations of the show being sexist and the remaining one always showing more cleavage, could it be that Dr. Pulaski came in as an android hater as a way for the producers to uh, get even with the women? I believe it's possible. After all, Diana Muldaur had a bad time on her year on the show, so there could be some behind the scenes connivory towards her meanness towards Data. And now she mansplains to Data. Jordy sticks up for the android. Jordy recommends a more random mystery and they all head back to the holodeck. What they're really trying to create here is a Sherlock Holmes escape room. Yes! Dr. Pulaski is dressed for the occasion. Now for the age old secret, just how big is the holodeck? Unfortunately, Data is just too quick to notice the computer put two stories together. Dr. Pulaski calls foul, but I blame the computer at this time. 300 years in the future, that holodeck should have a warehouse of randomized Holmes mysteries, so minus one point. Today's computer mystery games are currently 300 years ahead of this computer. Pulaski quotes the name of the show. The next point is lost since Moriarty should not be able to see the arch at this time. Jordy decides to defend Data by going balls out and tells the largest mobile computer to create an artificial intelligence capable of defeating the world's smartest android. This is what's going to happen. You know it's bad when security gets alerted. Moriarty suddenly becomes self-aware, much like the holographic doctor. Either he's going to short circuit with the overload of information, or get struck by copyright claims from the Conan Doyle family. We will soon find out. Is this the only time in Next Generation where skin color is mentioned? Look closely. Both Data and LaForge check out the hooker. Yes! While they're secretly planning non-G-rated trips to the holodeck to meet her later, they lost Dr. Pulaski. Aww. As always, they blame it on the first baseman. Data quotes an ancestor of Ambassador Spock. This is not 100% correct, so minus one point. I disagree here because they are walking on cobblestones when you can slip all the time on them. And somehow they ended up in a dead end. Ironically, this is a bottle show taking place completely on the Enterprise, which is to save money. But having all these extras in period outfits probably made it one of the more expensive episodes of the season. Jordy tries to solve the crime. Data solves it using deductive reasoning, but Dr. Pulaski isn't there to see it. 
When you watch the show the first time, right here is where you're thinking the computer is going to throw out tons of mysteries at once to confuse Data. Data claims it's the left fielder, but Jordy's still convinced it's the first baseman. Watson and Holmes meet their nemesis, Professor Moriarty, and I'd love to have that tapestry in the back. Shout out to Daniel Davis for being the perfect choice for the role. Yeah! Moriarty is on to them, and you can see in the expressions of both Data and Jordy, they're thinking, we're screwed. The artificial intelligence managed to scare the living shit out of the emotionless android. The next point is lost since the holographic paper should have disappeared, and Jordy is holding the paper in a way so the camera can see it, so minus one more point. Wesley would have solved it instantly, but he's not on the show, so minus one point. When you see them all in the conference room, do you ever wonder, who's flying the ship? Captain Picard swears in French. Worf is thinking, oh, he's not all that sophisticated after all, is he? Jordy shouldn't get into any tribe of trouble here. It was a total accident. Accident. It makes you wonder if the bioneural gel packs of Voyager would be even smarter and more dangerous. Worf wants to go in and kill, kill, kill. Riker wants to go in and kill the holograms. Minus one point for not considering transporting her out. Minus one point for holograms being able to kill. Picard is sensing something from the holodeck. Deanna says, no, that's my line. And I only got two lines on this show. Moriarty stuffs Dr. Pulaski full of tea and crumpets. Minus one point since holographic food would be impossible. Dr. Pulaski plays stupid while Moriarty talks to Mr. Computer. She almost gets him to fall her off the holodeck and that would have solved the problem instantly, but he doesn't want to go yet. The cute couple are having their first fight. Minus one point for a single set of doors on the turbo lift and I feel Worf's pain. I don't like suits either. It would have been nice if Worf got to go, but Moriarty probably could have recognized him as a Klingon now, and that would have caused more problems. Riker and Worf are now missing, so minus one point. It looks like Patrick Stewart was born to wear 1890s British suits. The crook quotes Macaulay Culkin. Ironically, Data talks about the holographic image in the same way Pulaski talks about him. Dr. Pulaski mentions being crammed full of crumpets. That was a metaphor for something else in the 1890s. Minus one point for a character on the holodeck being able to shake the ship. Minus one point for black squares on the consoles in the back. Riker asks Deanna if she can sense anything, but she's like, I only get to say two lines on this show, so you're all on your own. Mariarty says he has grown. That's what she said. Data says, you win, let's go to the bar. Moriarty knows he is a living hologram. Captain Picard suggests using the transporter, which is what they try again four years from now. Dr. Pulaski says, I love you. Moriarty says, I know. So Jordy created the first thinking hologram, which led to the doctor and never caught credit for it. When did killing him ever become an option? They can just save his program. He says, Kate, thank you for letting me stuff you full of crumpets. Dr. Pulaski is secretly thinking she can come back to the holodeck anytime and run his program for a really good time. Picard promises to bring him back, but since the producers didn't check with the Conan Doyle estate first about using the Sherlock Holmes characters, which got them into really hot water, minus one point. The dangerous man detests long goodbyes. Picard saves the Moriarty program and turns it off, while Dr. Pulaski is thinking about turning him back on when no one is looking. Picard addresses the ship by its preferred pronouns. Jordy actually made a big discovery. The ship's computer created a sentient artificial intelligence all because he misspoke one word. And Picard says, Jordy, you made an excellent discovery, but the next time, can you make sure the character doesn't come with copyright claims so we don't get into a buttload of trouble? Meanwhile, on the HMS Victory, Captain Zabata checks out his new gift from Lieutenant LaForge. So, I think that was the wrong clip. So, who were the holograms? Diz White was on Boston Legal. Anne Ramsey as Lieutenant Clancy will be back a little bit later this season. Richard Merson was on Quantum Leap, but left us early due to bladder cancer. Alan Sherman has 140 screen credits, mostly animated voices. And Daniel Davis has acted in almost every Shakespearean play. He was also in The Hunt for Red October, and most notably The Nanny. He will be back as Moriarty as soon as they get that copyright issue taken care of. Elementary Dear Data, which deals with copyright claims, artificial intelligence, 3D printers, online gaming, escape rooms, and saying goodbye to wind and sail, gets a score of 73%. <laughs> Thanks for viewing. Be sure to leave comments below, check out my other videos and playlists, click that like button, the share button, and that subscribe button, and I'll see you again soon.